Piano teachers, how you can show to piano beginners, even on their first piano lessons, the basic three types of music articulation. What I like to do with my students is before saying or naming any terms or giving examples, because the examples in everyday life or uh, physical phenomena uh, or from nature that you're going to give to your students are going to play a very big role on how they're going to perceive the differences between those three basic articulations and how they're going to try and perform them, perform them with their fingers and their hands, because still these muscle memories are not trained. So I am being very, um, how to say, tar target focused on which examples I give them for each kind of articulation. So first, I'm not going to say anything, I'm just going to play in three different ways with my five fingers in a row, five keys in a row. So I'm going to first play this. Then I'm going to play this. And then this. I can even ask them to close their eyes and just listen to the differences and then ask them to explain in their own words what is the differences. And usually they are able to give examples or even uh, at the, they can imitate right after me what and how I played it. And then I explain to them, well, the easiest articulations for them to guess is the staccato, which means to play jumpy, as if we are landing on a trampoline and the trampoline takes us back up. Or as if we're touching a hot stove, like my teacher used to say to me, or by accident we touched a needle. And what I explain with staccato and also how it is written, I will give them, I will draw for them those little dots. And I explain to them that the staccato is, a, they're playing it as if they're touching the, the keys, this plastic part of the piano keys with their bones, as if there is no, um, let's say, skin tissue or muscles, as if they're trying to touch it with their bones, because I want the staccato to be deep and well, with a good quality of sound, and not just hitting the keys and making this movement with their, um, how to say, with their wrist, breaking their wrists. No, I want the staccato to be internal, as if there is a, some small explosion as soon as they touch the key. And this is the trampoline, let's say, here is going to happen, the explosion is going to happen and going to... going to take them up again, but not in a very exaggerated movement. The explosion is internal. So that's the staccato. Then the non-legato. The legato is more difficult, so that I leave to the end, and for their muscle memories to unite the keys, this is a little bit, this needs attention. So let's go now to the non-legato. Plainly, as if walking, simple steps, one key after the other. This, of course, needs for them to be able to keep their hand round, in a round position, the tunnel hand where the car must be able to pass. And one by one, with these little breaks in between, or just simple, let's say, five simple steps, one after the other. One, two, three, four, five. And you can again play it for them so that they also listen to it acoustically, the differences. And the legato, the more complex, let's say, articulation, where they are playing united. They may say this word when you ask them to guess, but it is going to be difficult. Some, a lot of students are sticking the keys one after the other because they still don't have the muscle memory on how to flow one key onto the other. And while playing the next key, the first key has to go again back up. So legato is a little bit more difficult. Don't expect your students to get it again from the beginning. But if you are able to, and they are able to differentiate and already produce, they should be able to do that even from the first lesson. 
the non legato and staccato then it becomes more easier to produce the legato because they're already building muscle memory here and while hearing especially when they start learning scales they will be able to produce legato much easier <laughs> 